Well, my name is Ryan Fitch. I'm a brewer at Baxter Brewing Company right now. Hey all, Amanda here, and welcome to episode 85 of Great Beer Adventure. Way back in the day, as in episode 6 through 10, we looked at the ingredients of making beer, and we also tried a bit of home brewing. Today, we circle back to the process, but focus in on how a new recipe might come to be made in a bigger brewery. Before we jump into that conversation, might I grab just a moment to reminisce? One of the episodes in our initial beer ingredient series starts out with a little shout from a fuzzy friend. If you don't recall or you haven't listened yet, please go see if you can find it. Look through episodes 6 through 10 and see if you can spot a fuzzy little furry, very loud creature. It was one of my favorite openings yet. Okay, now on to the show. Hey everybody, I am sitting inside of Foundation Brewing Company in Portland, Maine, and I am sitting here today with Ryan. Hi, welcome. Hello, thank you. We are going to be talking about beer today. Big shocker, huh? <laughs> We're going to go through the typical four rounds. We've got a lot of great things planned for you, but before we start all that, Ryan, could you give us a brief... <laughs> little intro to who you are. I'll try to make it brief. Well, my name is Ryan Fitch. I'm a brewer at Baxter Brewing Company right now. I've been in the main beer scene. This is my 11th year. I started at Shipyard. I uh, was there for three years, moved to Sebago Brewing Company, was there for two years, and then when Baxter started to open up, I wanted something new and said, <laughs> let's try it, and it worked out, and still there today, since before there was beer, and... Aside from beer, I've got two awesome kids that are super crazy into hockey, and we live in ice arenas nowadays, and <laughs> basically stay at our house during the week. Yeah, I have uh, I have noticed via Facebook there's a lot of hockey happening in your life. A lot of hockey. A yeah. lot of hockey. And <laughs> I have no complaints whatsoever, because if you're going to spend time, you, I get to spend time either at my house, a brewery, or an ice arena, and I can't think of anything that was better than any of those, so... Good. That's wonderful. I'm happy to hear that. Let's jump right into round one and talk about the beers that we're having. We did. I mentioned that we are at Foundation Brewing Company. I like to describe this building as the incubator. You oh, know, I love this place. We're yeah. here every Thursday, basically. <laughs> you used to, we used to have Foundation Fridays, but work took over, so now we try. We just do like Foundation days. <laughs> days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, this this building that we're in though has housed many different breweries throughout the years here. Right now, it's ha- home to Foundation, who just went under a big expansion. Very large, yes. Proud of these guys, too. These are, they're, they're awesome. They've done a really great job. On the back side of this building is Austin Street, Yeah. who, in one of our prior shows, we actually talked about how they were going through a 10x expansion, and they like to call it that they went from tiny to small. <laughs> Actually, you know, they're not wrong. That's true. I never thought of it like that. I mean, they definitely got bigger, but yeah, that makes total sense. Yeah. But it's funny because in their pre- in that space previously it was Bull Jagger, right. which is awesome. Right. And who I work with one of their with Bull Jagger's old brewer, Maddie J, who obviously yeah. And we uh, will have just heard them. Uh, I sat down with Tom Bull on a previous episode, oh, nice. and I we talked Tom. all about Bull Jagger. And Maddie J came up actually. Why wouldn't he? Oh, right. <laughs> The biggest um, teddy bear brewer on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> Very tall guy, and all he wants to do is hug you. That's wonderful. Like, you go to work every day and just get big teddy bear hugs? Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> uh, there's also the yet-to-be-opened Battery Steel, I believe, is the name. Yeah, I haven't really heard much about them at all, except for their Gritty's alumni that wanted to go off and do their own thing, and I really can't wait yeah. to try what they have. I, I mean, I think it's great that so, so many breweries have started here. Main Beer Company, Bissell Brothers, Bull Jagger was here. Foundation decided, I'm not going to leave. I'm just going to get bigger. <laughs> Austin Street. Yeah. And now Battery Steel. Yeah, it's amazing. I love it. Yeah. And, you know, you can just, you can kill so much time in this little area. Yeah, <laughs> because literally like, what, 100, 200 feet down the road? Allagash. I'm looking at Allagash right now. 
Yeah. It's awesome. Send the send the kids to get air and then just come over here and hang out. Oh, yeah, because that is it's right now. trampoline down. park. Yeah. My kids are still too little to go on a trampoline, really. Like, the five-year-old probably could get something out of it. But the two-year-old, I don't imagine she would get much bounce. Yeah, probably not. Yeah. <laughs> you might want to wait a couple years. Yeah. Yeah. She's a little more self-sufficient. You'll be good to go. Uh, let's, let's not talk about the self-sufficiency these days because that has gone downhill. You thought I thought going into the two-year-old, I was like, oh, yeah, this is great. And two and a half. Two and give a it half, time. It'll be good. No self-sufficiency. You'll have a lot of fun when it's uh, – give it time. Yes. I, I definitely, definitely am. So we are drinking Foundation beers. Yes, absolutely. You started off with a venture. I did, and I have to have an epiphany chaser after that because I rarely can come to Foundation without having to have – one of each of these. I love these beers very, yeah. very much. The venture is uh, newish in this year. Yeah, they don't call either of them. Well, I guess they do call them double IPAs, but on the can, it's more main IPA, which is, I guess, their niche, and I think it's really cool. They're very similar, but I don't think I can pick a favorite out of the two of them. I was talking to Christy Mahaffey, and she actually said that like venture is the IPA they had wanted to do originally with that hop profile. Oh, cool. And Epiphany, because of hop buying and whatnot it took off so well that they're not getting rid of it no, they, they can't they'd be crazy <laughs> no. if they did i mean this um, is i have not done a side by side which maybe i should but i really have been craving some epiphany in my life so when i saw it was on tap i'm like i'll, I'll get one of those you have to. so you have to. it's really i mean the hell is lager they have on tap right now is phenomenal too and i've been really really getting into lagers over the last couple of years and i i love them my wife is not on board with loggers, <laughs> um, which incidentally works out pretty well if we have loggers in the house. But, you know, Ember up there also is, I believe, the first batch they ever did of Ember. I think I got the first ever glass of it, and then I got the last glass of it out of that batch. That was awesome. That was my, That's still, my thing, my favorite beer they've ever made here. Really? I love Ember. Yeah. I really enjoy the Zerzing, too, which is kind of a little bit more... Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Not, not quite funky, but... It, it, it's it, just it, the right amount. It's yeah. just, you know, if you want a little, like, a extremely refreshing right. tart beer, that's yeah. the way to go. I mean, they, like I said, they can't do any wrong here. They, yeah. All their beers are fantastic. And, you know, the crew, everybody here. It's just fun to come in and hang out with everybody all the time. Yeah, they made it a lot easier, too, to be able to come into the space because it was so... Oh, it was a closet. <laughs> it was a lot. But, yeah, it's beautiful now. I mean, it's bright. It's just, it's welcoming. It's warm in here. It's it's great. Um, and they actually just started trying. So there are a lot of beers here in Maine that people want. Uh, and when they come out, there are lines out the door for them. And did you get a chance to try their new system where you kind of take a number? I haven't yet. No, honestly, we haven't. Boy, I don't think we've been here on a release date ever. Oh, wow. Honestly. Um, usually we try to come the day after. Yeah. Um, and if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. Right. We'll get some. Um, same thing with Allagash. We, I don't think we've been to a release date there either. Yeah. We just kind of come down. And if it's here, then all right. If not, well, they're going to make it again. So. <laughs> right. So we'll get it. Yeah, that's I, my whole thing is I have a really, really hard time waiting in line. I want to support people like I want to support all the breweries around here. But thank you, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, um, but yeah, it, I can't wait in line. I just can't do it. I don't know. I mean, people people will do it. They'll wait. I mean, I guess for dinner releases at one point, people were camping out oh, and like yeah. doing beer trades and stuff. Yeah, that's technically really illegal. I know it is, which is People crazy. that are doing, going and standing in beer lines. It is illegal for you to bring beer. Yes, please, please don't do that. Stop doing that. Don't, don't do it. Okay, that's our PSA for the day. <laughs> yes, yes. Please don't do that. The brewery could get in trouble. Make it so we're still allowed to really have these awesome release days and stuff like that. Don't ruin it. Yeah. Okay, let's move right on, though, to the second round, because it really piggybacks on beers and recipes, because that's really what we're going to talk to you about today, is how a recipe comes to be. And the reason that I thought you would be a great person to talk about this is because you actually have a new recipe that it has changed a little bit, correct? It has. and But I think that's part of most recipes pretty much yeah i mean this is um it basically started out as i mean i my favorite beers are i love double ipas i love regular ipas lagers but and i i love hefeweizens i think they're awesome and um i don't really think there's many more 
refreshing beers than a Hefeweizen. I guess the way it came about was at Baxter, we were kind of looking for a, a new winter seasonal. And this is before Phantom Punch was even out and any of that stuff. And, and so I was like, well, why not just do an Imperial Hefeweizen and something that is refreshing on... I mean, we could have it year-round if we wanted to because a 7% beer isn't going to... It's not going to kill you, and it's gonna, it'll, be, it'll be nice, and it's a Hefeweizen, so you're going to get that real nice banana and clove flavor from the yeast. But with a little twist on it, let's dry hop it like an IPA, so it maybe it'll appeal to a wider range of people. And, um, it, I mean, we did it on the pilot system a bunch. So when did that start? Well, it started before, well, on the count of three when that came out. The uh, third anniversary beer. I don't know if you remember that one. I remember hearing about it, but I never got to try it. Well, that was it. Okay. Um, it got released as the third anniversary beer in the cans and on draft. And um, we toned down the dry hops on it for the for the big batch. People seemed to honestly like the pilot beers more. So that was, I mean, that was our third anniversary. So three years ago is really when it started. About four years ago, honestly, is when it started to come about. When we were looking and toying with the ideas of the winter seasonals and stuff. Um or Phantom Punch, rather. So, four years ago, you started coming up with this. And do you know about how many pilot batches you did? Boy, at, at least a dozen. Really? Yeah. I mean, just trying to get the hops right. And we tried a few different yeasts. And, and our pilot system is only 10 gallons. So, okay. it's, it's, so it's like a homebrew, right? Exactly right. Yeah. It, it's kind of fun because you can, I mean, if we're doing 10 gallons, you can take that batch and split it in half and dry hop one fermenter one way, one fermenter another way, try one yeast in one. So do you guys like another. literally have like the five gallon carboy? We have a ton, ton of five gallon carboys. Wow. Yeah. So we can do, we can take one beer, we can do different yeasts, anything we want really on it. And it's doesn't cost much of anything. And it's, it's kind of fun. And everybody at the brewery gets to do their own thing. This is just kind of one of the ones that stuck, I guess. And it was just so different. I mean, no, I didn't, couldn't think of anybody other than Brooklyn and Schneider when they did their collab for a, it was called Hopman Vice, and they did their collab for an Imperial Hefeweizen, and I thought, I was like, this is awesome. Yeah. And, but nobody else did a Hefe, so I was like, well, why not? So for me, like when I'm cooking, I, I don't know enough about brewing beer to be able to do this with beer. But when I'm cooking, I kind of have the general idea of what goes into a recipe. So like I know basically what you would find in chili. And, okay. you know, just yep. ba- basically, you know, there's some meat in there, some beans, maybe some other veggies. There's some kind of tomatoey thing that brings it all together. And so you have this idea of, like, what basically goes. Do you have, like, that knowledge about a Hefeweizen? Or did you actually go out and find, like, a Hefeweizen recipe? No, I, I basically, well, when it was written, I, I had never brewed a batch of beer professionally in my life. I, I mean, I, start, I didn't start... I didn't touch alcohol until I was 22 years old. Oh, yeah. So when (laughs) my father-in-law would love this. So when I met my wife, I found out that my father-in-law was a home brewer, and and he kind of got me into it. And so it was kind of like I had never really – I still don't really home brew much at all. It's like only he and I do it together, and that's about it. And it's maybe once, twice a year. But it was like, I guess basically what it came down to is like, I, I had an idea of something I wanted to do and not having the knowledge of how to actually do it. I was, I went and talked to our, our brewmaster, Ben, and he said, yeah, absolutely. That sounds really cool. Let's, let's sit down and let's, let's come up with something. And he goes, I'll let you drive the ship. And if you need some direction, I'll, I'll give it to you, but let's see what you come up with. And that's essentially how it was born. So did he kind of say like, okay, to be a Hefeweizen, you need like this percentage of wheat and exactly right yeah and so then you can kind of play with those percentages a little bit yeah but like basically you get a basic recipe by talking to him and then you had fun with it yeah kind of yeah i said i want to do a a, my ideas for an imperial half of ice i think it would be kind of fun let's dry hop it like an ipa let's find hops that'll play well with the yeast so it's not off-putting to people Uh, because if somebody's looking for a half of ice they're not gonna essentially expect a hoppy beer. Right. So it's kind of, I mean, it takes a lot of people by surprise, but I think when it came out, it was actually, it surprised a lot of people and it wasn't actually off-putting. It was, people were really happy with it. So what are some of the hops that you played around with? 
You said you um, wanted them to play well with the yeast. Yeah, um, we really settled on Chinook and uh, Huel Melon, where they worked really well with it. And like I said, the recipe was tweaked a couple times, and I really tried to to dig before I came down to because I was at the brewery this morning. I tried to find it, and I don't remember what the other ones are, which is okay. kind of a bummer. But um, those those are still in it. Those are the ones that we finished with in the in the on account of three, and there's it's. I think it's pretty much the same, except we upped the dry hopping a little bit in it for the for the production batch, which it'll be end up being called Coastal Haze. Which is not the most recent name I've heard. No, well, no, it's well, it's the final name for it. It's the final name. How many? Okay, so it came out three years ago, and before it came out, did it have any other names, or was it always going to be? Oh no, it's had names. Yeah, no, it had um, the original name for it was Snow Vice, which. Um, we would love to keep, but distributors said that if the beer name has the word snow or anything that has to do with the season in it, and it's like spring, then they're not going to buy it because they think it's old. So it went from that to on the count of three for the third anniversary, and then we toyed with a bunch of names. Um, I was thinking Scog and Fog would be kind of fun for it. <laughs> it's a, um, a mouthful. I know. Well, you know, Andrew Scog and River and stuff, yeah. but... Um, that got shot down, and then Cumulonimbus, which I thought would be cool for like you know cloudy, yeah. like a half of ice, and but that sounded too much like Harry Potter. Yes, no, that would have been fantastic. It would have been my favorite beer. I know, <laughs> that's that's what I was thinking, <laughs> but it was um, that it would got have been shot Lisa down. Sturgeon's favorite beer too from Gagan. Oh yeah, she is such a huge Harry Potter fan. Is she really? Oh, so so much so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had her on a recent episode. She's at this point not newly pregnant, but. She's um, pregnant, and they did a really adorable little um, announcement where she's, like, putting stuff into a brew kettle of, like, you know, off the play off sugar and spice and everything nice. And, and Harry Potter was, like, one of the ingredients she put into the brew kettle. She put Harry Potter in the brew kettle? It's like the book. <laughs> I know. The picture I know. of the Mona Lisa. <laughs> I gotcha. <you. laughs> um, so, yeah, her and I would have really enjoyed that. So, not a Harry Potter name. Not a Harry Potter name. It'll be called Coastal Haze. Coastal Haze. Yeah. That reminds me of another one, though. I don't know what Purple it Purple Haze me. from Abita? No. Didn't we used to have something in the area that... What are some of the old breweries that are not around anymore? Was there a Coastal one? Coastal Extreme Brewing? Which is also Newport Storm? They were here for a brief period of time, I think. Really? Maybe. There's a picture I have in my head. Um, but anyways, tangents. We have. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. um, <clears throat> We've met. It's going to happen. <laughs> yes. So has it been brewed in the past three years? No. Okay. So wh- why did it go away? Why is it coming back? It went away because they were just, so we're, you know, Baxter's getting bigger. We have more employees. It went back up a little bit. Okay. Go um, for it. You back us up. They're. It's very expensive to get yeast, and so they, with the production beers that we have, it basically just wouldn't fit in. Because it's a very different yeast strain. It's a very different yeast strain. Um, also, tank space is very limited, so if we can plan it out, I mean, I don't think we would have been able to do it as a year-round or anything like that. I wish we could have, because, you know, not trying to toot my own horn, but it was popular. People really, <laughs> people liked it. Um, I, he's trying to toot his own hunt. <laughs> maybe I'm amazing. Maybe, maybe a little. Well, no, it was, it, it was well received. People really liked it and I wish we could have it more often, but you know, and maybe in the future we will, I don't know, but it's coming back now. So that's good. So what made that decision happen? Um, they wanted something. They, it, I guess I don't want to call it like an encore series or anything like that, but it was popular. So maybe I guess just to keep people wanting it. And I are guess? you guys... I feel like I saw something where you guys are using local malt in that one. Is that true? Yeah, yes, we are, actually. And we got to actually go and rake the grain at Blue Ox Malting, which was awesome. That was really cool. I understand where you're coming from with that because I think it would be really cool, too. But I think it's so funny where it's like, you know, it's it's work. It's part of the process, you know. Yeah. And, you know, and but we're still all like, ooh, I got to go work. It was yeah, so uh, much fun. That was a blast, yeah. It was funny. It was also funny to watch Luke. Uh, they had some wires around, and he almost got he almost face planted in the grain, which is pretty funny. Oh no! Yeah, he was laughing too. Fortunately, so I can make fun of him a little bit. <laughs> yeah, don't let him listen to this though on like a bad day. 
I Wait. probably will. I've, <laughs> known, I've known Luke long enough where he can handle it. <laughs> He's a good guy. So how big is a big batch, a production batch? Um, well, we have a 30-barrel brew house. Okay. And um, we're going to end up, we have four 60-barrel fermenters. And then we have six 240-barrel fermenters that are Holy outside. Crap. Yeah, so it's a it's around the clock brew day. We got to brew eight times to fill one of them. So we're actually doing two two hundred and forty barrel fermenters worth of it this year, which is awesome. Wow! How many? Okay, so is there a percentage of like kegs to cans? Because you only can up there. We only can, yeah, can all, all metal all the time. That's it. Can and keg. Um, it all depends on the order, I guess. I know that we want to get a lot of it out in cans. Um, okay. I don't know what the orders are, so right. I couldn't tell you what the keg to can ratio is. But approximately, like, or do you know? Do you have the math figured out? Because I don't. <laughs> Probably how not. How many cans <laughs> that that would make, or even how many kegs that that would make? Uh, all of them. All, all of them. <laughs> That's all I can tell. I don't know. That's Perfect. that's a lot of. I know. Sorry, master. The obvious answer. Yeah. Um, perhaps. Um, perhaps my wonderful show note person can do some math for us <laughs> and figure out just how many cans of beer that would make. I'm putting that out there. Yes. Somebody can somebody figure that out yeah. and email it into the show. That would be great. <laughs> yes, you can tweet at us at Great Beer ADV. Let us know. <laughs> Please let us know. I, we're drinking Epiphany. We're not going to do math right now. No, no, no. If we weren't drinking Epiphany, we weren't we going to do math We would not be right doing now. math right now. <laughs> so it's going back into production. Will you be doing, you said you're a brewer. So will you be like I really, leading? I really hope I'm on the brew schedule for that week. It all depends on how things flow. Um, we work rotating schedules. So if I happen to be on the brewing side and one of those weeks that we're doing it, yeah. then, um, then yes, I'll have something to do with it. <laughs> but if I'm scheduled to be down in the cellar on that doing like, you know, fermentations and filtering and stuff like that, then, um, then no, <laughs> I, right. I won't. <laughs> um, and do you get to, do you get to, because it kind of was your, your baby, do you get to see any of the can art or anything prior to it? Or is that a completely different set of people honest answer i wish um i'd love to know what the cans look like i have no idea i have no clue at all no um i i have a feeling that they're going to be relatively in line with everything else baxter does yeah i mean there's a look that you guys have going for you and you wouldn't want something to be off brand no. would it be kind of fun to have like at least a little bit of a Some, something really eye-catching is what i'm hoping it is because yeah. i'd love the stuff to fly off the shelves but you know time will tell yeah. It did the last time, so let's see. I mean, a couple of the questions that were always asked at Brewfest are, when's bootleg fireworks coming back out? And are that you ever can gonna... is beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, it, it's going to look different this year, too, coming oh, out. Oh, really? Um, we had to use, <laughs> well, we had a ton of extra cans left, so we used the same ones from the last batch mm -hmm. for this one instead of crushing them. Um, so the next ones will be a lot nicer. I think we're going to toy with some neon green and some, some matte black and stuff like that, which should hopefully... Make wow, it really, really that's a popping, yeah. different, very different look. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, keep people looking for it. That's yeah, all. they're like, where is it? It's right yeah. there. <laughs> oh, and then if the packaging's nice, you know, like Magic Hat, they've got it down. Like, their packaging's eye-catching. It's beautiful. And yeah, they even sell if you're so not looking for them, you find exactly. them every no, time. No, it's always right there. So hopefully we can have something that catches people's eyes like Magic Hat. That'd nice. That'd be awesome. Yeah. So of those, what, approximately million cans that you're going to be putting together. Yeah, give or take. Give or take. <laughs> yeah. The malt that you're getting from Blue Ox Malt House, what, is that going to be most of it? I believe it's all the wheat we are getting there. I don't think that any of uh, – there's a little bit of two-row in there. Um, I don't think any of that stuff is going to be there. It's mostly bags. But and it's all and, of your wheat is coming from? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's really great. It's a lot. Of wheat. <laughs> yeah. But I think that's so wonderful because I know we talked to Blue Ox before way back in somewhere between episodes six and ten. But what episode are you on now? This will be episode 80-ish. And that was back in ten? Somewhere between six and ten, yeah. Wow, you're busy. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So we went up there before they actually made their giant box that they used to... Yep, the kiln. The kiln. Oh, uh, not the kiln. The Yeah, the, the, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, the big... Yeah. 
germination station, I guess you could call it. Sure, that sounds yeah. perfect. Um, it was just a big, empty warehouse, and you can hear a cricket in the background. There was one single cricket way on the other side, but he wouldn't stop, and it was echoing everywhere. Oh, you actually heard a cricket. Yeah. That, that's real funny. It is real. yeah. I you, thought you were just describing the situation. Like, no, you could have heard a was, cricket in the background. It was so no, quiet in there. It was literally a cricket that would not stop. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, this show has definitely been... Um, there's certain episodes. There, there's a cricket one episode. There's sheep. And when we were working at the hop yard, uh, there's been some seagulls. In the, sheep? Sheep. They had they had sheep cleaning up the, the stuff, so they were there. Uh, they got out during our... <laughs> hey You've guys. got a fan How club. Are you? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> that is the Ryan fan club. Yeah, yeah. You know, you get out on the scene a little bit, and you get to know a lot of people. It's kind of fun. You see people everywhere, you know. Yeah. I Absolutely. Love I love it. I wouldn't trade it for anything. Yeah. yeah. And a seagull. That's the end of the that And story. a seagull. Oh, yeah. We were on a roof. You're on a roof doing a podcast. Yeah. Like a house roof or like a building, like flat? Or was it like, or are you like on a salt box house? Or was it like you were no, like, it was not a salt box house. It was the top of Bolfini's. There's a rooftop deck up there. It's oh, not okay. part of Bolfini's. I got just, you. That's I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yep. Cool. And um, It's a little safer. A little bit, yeah. yeah. The the pitched roof would be a lot, a lot more difficult. I imagine that'd be. A little... <laughs> oh, you guys, you're missing the uh, the facial expressions here. They are fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, all the wheat and that. Oh, I, what I was saying is that that's really great because all of the wheat that they're doing, they're all of their stuff they're getting is from Anastragon. Yeah. Um, not Anastragon County. Um, uh, the county. It starts with an A. A rustic. <laughs> We'd right. get there. Yeah, you said Anna. Str- I can't even say. That. I figured between the two of us, right. we can create. You know, we'll work off of one brain and we'll figure it out. <laughs> that sounds good. Um, but yeah, so all of that is coming from in the state, which is amazing. Yeah, it's, that- it's cool. It's a lot of fun. I mean, we've always been as local as possible, and I really like that a lot. I mean, I figure. I feel it's kind of the thing with the main brewing scene anyway. Everyone tries to do as much local as possible, and I think it's. It's fun. It's really fun to work with everybody. It definitely feels like, at least here, you know, Rising Tide, their name is Rising Tide Lifts All Ships, but it's not just the breweries. It feels like trying to lift the entire state. Yeah. And and that's really what I try to do with the show is find how all these things come together. You know, all these different people, the the lawyers and the tap blank leaders and, you know, I don't know. I just, that's what I love doing. And so this is really fun. Also really thinking about the process. Do I have a point to make? Do you have a point? Yeah. To, are you asking me? Yeah. I we're sharing so. our brain, right? Yeah. But I, uh, I don't know. Okay. You, I hope you do. <laughs> I think that might be the end of it. I think that's we're right. just going to stop. I do that too. It's okay. Fine. Yeah. I actually, I almost lost track right in the middle of a sentence a little bit ago, but fortunately it popped back in. That doesn't always happen, so you got lucky. <laughs> Good job. Um, it's devastating when it happens. Yes. I'm really hoping that doesn't rub off on the kids. <laughs> that would be, it's trouble. That would be a, a real big trouble. So in this whole idea of developing a recipe, which in order to get a production size has taken four years. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, it. yeah, I mean, it, it went... It went to the third year anniversary beer because it was just popular. It was the most popular on the pilot system. And, um, you know, it, all the coworkers really liked it a lot. And and it just kind of felt right to do. Um, having said that, I don't think we're ever going to do a beer like that again for an anniversary party because, I mean, granted, 7% isn't high, but nobody expected a Hefeweizen to be 7%. So at Port City Music <laughs> right. Hall, there were a lot of really, really drunk people. I can imagine. Um, it snuck up. It didn't drink like a 7%er. It drank like a regular Hefeweizen. So it was scary. But yeah. um, but no, it, it was well-received. And uh, you getting ready to take a photo here? No. We're, we're stopping in a moment. I'm very easily distracted. Yes. Stop, so you know. stop paying attention to the photographer. Um, there's, it's only me, folks. I have to be the photographer for you all and the recording person. And, and I have to try to remain focused. Remain and, focused. Yeah. It's tough. I, I have a very, very limited brain capacity, so <laughs> trying to stay focused is, a, is difficult. 
Especially when there's shiny objects around. And so many shiny I know. objects. Stainless tanks, forget about it. I know. It's all done. It's all done. <laughs> so one question I did have before I let you add any final words was about the tap room up at Baxter. You have a number of pilot brews on up there. Isn't that right? I've heard that. Yeah. Um, we try to do that. Quite honestly, we have a backlog usually of, of a bunch of stuff. Um, cause, you know, it's Lewiston, and I'm not bad-mouthing Lewiston when I say this, but it's like it's there's no real easy way to get there. I think that if, you know, it's either you take you pay 250 on the turnpike to get up there or you take an hour and a half of back roads from Portland, and it's like nobody really wants to do that. So to try to, you know, get people there, we always try to advertise the pilot beers that we have. I mean, we've had some crazy stuff on that. We've had some stuff that's been amazing, and we've had some stuff that's been just an absolute bomb. And and I mean, we we did a guacamole beer one time. Oh, and it was it was filthy. It was so gross. <laughs> um, that does not even sound a little bit. It, it good. wasn't <laughs> even a little bit good. It was awful. I was like, well, uh, wait a minute. If we're we're talking about the, the process of making a recipe. What did that initial meeting go like? I See, that's the thing. I don't know because, you know, like going back, I was like, you know, everybody at Baxter can brew their own beer. And it was one of the one of the packaging guys that was like, I'd like to, it was his turn. It's like, I'd like to do something like this. And I mean, it was like, it was the weirdest, like greasiest mash I've ever seen. I mean, like <laughs> avocado in there. It was just like. I don't know. It was bad. I don't know. I hate guacamole. So as oh, I, I love even, guacamole. I couldn't even but touch it. But that does not. No, no. See, that's the thing. Even to guacamole lovers, they didn't like it. Yeah. It's like, so this is not going to go into production anytime soon. And, oh, right. and we, that came, that was a very fast realization that this is just not going to work out. Yeah. You, you got to. Like you, oh, I wish I could have been a fly on the wall for that conversation. You know, I really love guacamole. Me too. Ooh, we should drink it. Should, let's make a beer out of that. Maybe it would be a better <laughs> smoothie. No, totally a beer. No, totally a beer. Yeah, yeah. We don't. We haven't gotten into the smoothie market yet. So <laughs> right. maybe, maybe someday. But, but you right gotta now. imagine that it was just like somebody drinking too many beers, eating chips and guacamole, like at home. They, they were like, boy, this would. This would taste good with some beer flavor in it. <laughs> I, now you I don't see, know. I it, actually could see like taking certain beers and putting a little bit into your guacamole. You know, oh, and maybe well, going, it's like cooking with beer. Right, make, yeah, that way makes a little bit of sense. But making a beer with the guacamole ingredients, <laughs> right. I don't know. But that's that's the nice <laughs> thing about the pilot system because it's only the ten gallons, so you can do whatever you want, and, and right. it's either going to pass or fail. Yeah. And there have been a lot of fails, but there have been more passes than fails, which that's, has been nice. That's good. Yes. It's been, uh, it, it's been a lot of fun. We've had some crazy <laughs> stuff. My favorite, okay, so I'm also like a huge Bruins fan, and one of my, one of my buddies, uh, Joe, who's also a goalie, um, he is one of the packaging supervisors up there, and we got to brew his recipe together on the pilot system, which was uh, a red ale. And uh, we were trying to come up with a name for it, and for those who are... Old school Bruins fans. Um, we came up with the name Malt Schmidt. I see. I know a lot of Bruins names because my husband's a huge Bruins fan. All right. But well, you're going to have to quiz him on this later. Okay, the, I will. The, his name was Milt Schmidt. Ah. So, that makes sense. which was kind of fun. So, to me, that it's like part of the fun of the pilot system is getting to name your own beer. Yeah. And so, there have been some really, really fun ones that have gone on, which I love. I like pun names. Unfortunately, that's you not... You seem like a punny type of guy. I really like punny stuff. <laughs> yes. You don't even know I'm so punny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a good time. I mean, we've, like I said, there have been passes and fails, and this, on the count of three, or now Coastal Haze just happened to be one that was a big pass, and it, we're fortunate enough to have it go in when the direction When is it coming again. out? I believe it's on the brew schedule for... Middle to end of January, and it should be released end of February, uh, early March. Well, look at the quitting getting, folks. It's going to be right about when right this around show the corner. comes out. Well, there you go. Yeah. So, yeah, that's going to work out well. Very so well. So, please buy it. Please drink it. Please enjoy it. If not, well, thanks for trying it. <laughs> if, if it's not in your local store yet, make sure that you uh, keep an eye out for it. Yeah, I know that it. you're not necessarily the 
Baxter distributor type of guy, but do you know how far of a reach you guys have, like statewide? Uh, I do. We're all over Maine, statewide. Yep. Um, what about uh, further than that? Uh, we go down to about as far as New York City. Okay. Um, I don't know outside of the city how far we are around New York, but Rhode Island, Massachusetts, Vermont, New Hampshire, Connecticut, down through there. Hopefully going to expand some more, but um, as far as... You know, tank space goes, we basically, we're maxed out. We have no space to put anything unless we build, add on to our bunker and put more tanks outside, which I don't think is going to happen. So we need another facility. Oh, wow. Um, It's crazy. Yeah. It's really crazy. Well, congratulations to all of you up at Baxter because that is amazing. Thank you. Yeah, it's fun. It's been a, it's been a crazy ride seeing everything happen from like the start. Yeah. Because there were two, two 60 barrel fermenters when I got there. And one 60-barrel bright tank, and then obviously the same brew house. And to go from that to four fermenters and then to the 240 barrels that are outdoors, it's like it's been insane and a lot of fun to watch. Yeah. Really cool to be a part of. I can imagine that that would be the case. Um, Okay, so anything else we should know about how a beer comes to be recipe-wise? I don't know. I mean, from my own point of view it's like it's like you know if you come up with with an idea of something like oh boy i'd love a beer to taste like this usually i think usually they stem off of like if you find a beer that you like out on the market and you're like boy i'd love to make something like that because you know you can find a clone recipe anywhere but you gotta have the right water you gotta have the, you know if you change the yeast up it's gonna be a totally different beer if you change the hops up it's gonna be a totally different beer I guess it all depends on kind of what you what you want to go for. I mean, I think a lot of ideas come from other breweries, really. I think that's about it. I mean, that's don't be afraid. Like to I try, said, like I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Essentially, you know, try. You know, get out there, try. If you think, think something looks awesome, why not try it? If you're a home brewer, especially, try it. You might find the next thing you wanted to brew. You know, why not? I want to do an IPA with like mango passion fruit flavors. Mango pat. What would you call it? Oh, I don't know yet. Come on, off the cuff. Ah, I don't know. I really don't know. I just know the flavor I want in my mouth. Well, Cam- <laughs> Camp Juana Mango is taken from Harpoon. Oh, well, dang. I know, right? <laughs> it's such a good name. <laughs> I would probably, because I'm always trying to, like, make the show grow as much as I possibly can, I would somehow try to brand it around the show's name, right? I'll tell you the best name that I've ever heard in my my buddy Adam, who used to be the beer buyer at Whole Foods, came up with this name, so I can't steal the name. Okay. But the beer would be uh, a double IPA with Hercules hops, because the description of Hercules hops is spicy and powerful. And add habanero peppers to that and call it It Burns One IPA, oh. <laughs> which I think, honestly, is probably one of the coolest names I've ever heard. I actually just saw somebody on Instagram at Great Beer Adventure that had a shirt on that said IPA lot when i drink i've seen that before yeah. that's a great shirt <laughs> yeah kind of it's true for a lot of people <laughs> but i yeah i mean I, that is and it's really funny because you see ipa really big and then you got they just it's talking about peeing <laughs> right in my alley right there, there you go. it's like <laughs> yeah. perfect i know it, it's yeah. venturing on punny and punny and bathroom humor you bathroom can't go wrong humor. i don't perfect. care how old you get bathroom humor is funny I don't know. Maybe. Your kids will keep it alive for you. Trust me. (laughs) Oh, goodness. I hope not. All right. Let's move on to the third round. (laughs) You can hope all you want. They will. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Third round. Third round is where I ask the same question to every single person that I ever talk to. Okay. What is your first beer memory? Boy, that's such a tough question. I I don't know if I remember my first... Beer, what would my first beer memory be? My first beer memory is probably boring, <laughs> but my best memory, okay, best slash craziest beer memory I could share with you. Sure. Is that okay? Yeah. My whole thing is that I let people interpret the question however they would like. It's not like I'm gonna like hunt down your past okay. and find out. Yeah. Okay. All right. That works. Well, to go along with that question, my first beer was Miller Lite, and it was awesome. Really? It was so good, and I never wanted to drink anything else. So, and then 
I don't remember why. That I think is we not just, a typical reaction. No, I, but I was, you know, I was 22. I didn't know any better. You know, right. Right. Never, I had never been into it at all. So I was like, why not? It was good. And I was living, I had two roommates at the time and they kind of got me into it. And plus my hockey team, my, I have a t-shirt that says this. It was like my, my drinking team had a hockey problem. I've seen the running version of that. Not that I own that because I don't. <laughs> well, so they, they were strict Miller Lite drinkers. So I just kind of hopped in with them and thought it was the best thing ever. And then my, my old roommates, um, who one of them was on my hockey team anyway, he, uh, he started to drink other things and I kind of got into that, but didn't really care. And then my wife and I went to, I think it was even before we were married, we went to uh, Gritty's. And I had their light beer. I thought I was like, this is awesome. I love it. I love it. And then I just kind of like, wow. from there, it just kind of grew and grew and grew. And my father-in-law likes to take the credit for getting me into beer, but I got him into good beer. Good job. That's always important. Yeah. Try. So you wanted the, the crazy beer story, I guess. I went down to a horseshoe tournament at my friend's house, and it was my whole hockey team down there, and my now wife was there, and I was still living at home. Happens and, to the best of us. Oh, well, this is crazy because my mom was a substance abuse counselor and my dad's a uh, fifth grade teacher who doesn't drink. So um, I go down to this party with my now wife and we I got pretty lit and they lived down in Waterboro and I grew up in Raymond. So it was about a 50 minute drive back and my wife had to drive. I only remember rolling the window down. And I remember hanging my head out the window, and I don't know how long it was out there, <laughs> but I remember kind of looking a little bit and seeing the lights in the center of Wyndham, and then I remember being home, and then I don't really remember much else, except for waking up in the morning to my dad hosing off the side of my car. Well, that's too bad. Which was awesome. <laughs> and trying to explain that to people that didn't think I drank was even cooler. <laughs> Is that when you had to kind of break it to him? Like, this is the direction I'm going, Dad? Sorry. I didn't bring that to them, no. no. <laughs> I, I said, well, I should actually be honest because I'm sure my wife's going to hear this. I said, well, Jamie got a little sick on the way home. <laughs> and so I threw her into the bus and I was in the clear. Until uh, now. Uh, th- I'll tell them now. <laughs> I think they actually know now. but That's good. Yeah, at the time, like... Well, I mean, we're still married, so I guess that's good. Yeah. She, she forgot about she, it. Yeah. Not anymore. <laughs> no, no. 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 Um, so how do your parents feel about you being in the beer industry now? You know, it's funny. They actually love it. Um, they think it's the coolest thing. In fact, um, my mom has always loved wines and oaky Chardonnays and stuff. Um, and we tend to go out for lunch periodically. And uh, I asked her one day if she wanted to do something different. And she said sure what do you have in mind and i said don't worry about it and so we went over to allagash and uh we yeah. had the flight over there yeah and she fell in love with it nice and they are there once twice a week now <laughs> um my dad will get the flight also but he'll only drink the white out of it and give the rest to my mom because he's the dd everywhere yeah and uh yeah so they're they're completely into it and they love it and oh how far you all have come i know I know. I never would have imagined that my dad would act because I've seen him drink a, a Allagash White at eleven o'clock in the morning. <laughs> You're like, dad. I'm like, it's not even noon yet. What are you doing? And he's, he's like, "What?" <laughs> he just tips it back. He doesn't care. Yeah. But it's really funny. They, they're, uh, yeah, it's, it's cool to have them as like now they see what it's all about, and they don't just go over there for the beer. They go over there to, you know, see the people, and because yeah. they love, they all know them over there. So right. You know, they go over there, say hi to everybody, get the flight, they buy some beers, and they head home and go about their day. Lovely. Yeah, I, my mom's now into beer, too. She, yeah, we we actually had a really fun night last night. Like, I was introducing her to different styles, and we just laughed so much. She So, she actually did a review, <laughs> a review of um, Sam Adams... They have like the double raw or something. It's like a ten percent. Oh, the rebel raw. Re- yeah, rebel raw. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's a good beer. I was pleasantly surprised by that. One. Yeah, she thought it tasted like dish soap. Really? <laughs> yeah. Huh. I don't know. And then so she's she like, boy, this this tastes like uh, oh, crap. I just drew a blank on the on the soap name I was going to use. Well, I Dawn. Use, yeah, there it no, is. it's not Dawn. We have at my house this like lemon 
uh, Mrs. Myers or something like that. And okay. and she's like, it tastes like that. And then she goes off talking about salt and vinegar chips. Uh, how often do you drink the Mrs. Myers, Mom? <laughs> yeah. So it it was a it was like really a really good evening. Um, we stayed up later than we should have, but lots of laughs were had. Been and, there. And that was wonderful. Nice. Yeah. So I love that, you know, So our parents have taught us so much throughout life, but I love that now that we're, like, starting to learn things, you know, we can teach them, too. Absolutely. And I think it's yeah. just so much fun seeing those. I love the fact that my parents, not a week goes by where they don't have some Allagash beer in the house. Like, my mom actually, she bought the... Whatever anniversary Magnum bottle of Curio it was, because that's her like that and Triple are her favorite beers from over there. She goes, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have this together on Christmas Eve because we do Christmas Eve with my parents and Christmas yeah. with the other uh, grandparents. And um, I got one glass. <laughs> it was gone, and she was dropping f bombs in front of the kids. And it was crazy. I mean, I wouldn't trade it for anything. It was really funny, and our yeah. kids have heard it. I mean, yeah. mom and dad like to swear, so. Um, you know, it, we do our best around them to not to, but it happens. But uh, yeah, it was uh, it was a pretty intense Christmas Eve when you got your mom slurring her words on the who is a former substance abuse counselor slurring her words from Curio. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of Curio. That is a lot of Curio. Yeah, yeah. my uh, yeah my mom each year she goes um, on these really long road trips, and each year the beer she brings back becomes better and better. Like, where, where did she go? Like, where was the last one she went? Oh, uh, the last one she went out to, um, like, Mount Rushmore. And, oh, nice. Yeah. So, like, and then she's also been up to, like, um, my family's from Newfoundland. So she goes up that way. You know, she just kind of goes out. And so, but each year, it's like you can, like, I can tell. If I had, like, I should have, I should have known that this was coming. Like, if I was a, I should have, like, definitely taken pictures of each of the years, because you could just really see like her beer journey <laughs> through. Do you ever give her pictures. a lit, like? Does she ever give you the the trip like her route, and you give her like, okay, so this brewery is there. Would you stop there? Sometimes, um, but I find that for me personally, I really just enjoy drinking whatever's local from wherever. That's cool. And yeah, um, cool. drink local wherever you are. Absolutely. And uh, I I also really like. You know, the surprise. And I like seeing what she does on her own. She's actually really funny. She'll, like, if she's at a brewery, if she ends up at one on one of her trips, she'll, like, call me. And if I don't answer right away, she'll text me. And she'll be like, I am at a brewery. I need to know what you want me to bring you home. The seriousness so. in your face right there. I can see how your mom's saying, hey, <laughs> call me back. Yeah. Now. Now. Do you, do you if not If you understand? want something from here, you better call me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, it's a... Uh, it's great. It's definitely something like it's, you know, my husband and I bonded over beer, and now my mom and I really have two. That's, it's taken. That's hilarious. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, beer in the same way though. I love life. having, like, I love having them being part of the scene. It's yeah. fun. Okay, uh, so round four. All right, hit it. All right, so these are random getting to know you questions. Okay. And I need to go and get more of them because these ones have all been asked, but. In this hand are the ones that I've answered, and this hand are the ones I haven't answered, but a guest has answered. Okay. So I'm going to have you pick out of this hand, my left hand, folks, if you really want to know. And then you can ask me that question. Then I'll shuffle them all together. Okay. And, and we you, just like, do random picks. And we're say, just going to hey. do one each. All right. Just one each. One each. Just one each. Okay. That's it. I like it. Quick and easy. Okay. Tie it all up. All right. Pick one, and that's what you're going to ask me. I'm going to do a little shuffle action here. This is a this is a good one. It is. Yeah. All right, hold on. I'm gonna pick one for you. All right, this is the one you get. All right, this is a good one. I bet I can guess the answer to this one though. For you. <laughs> What's your favorite sport? No. <laughs> That's a gimme. <laughs> That's a softball. <laughs> Pretty close yeah. though. Um, okay. Do you want to go first? Sure. Okay. Uh, what's your proudest childhood moment? Oh. I'm sorry. Accomplishment. Accomplishment. I. I don't really remember a lot of my childhood. I'm not really sure why. <laughs> there is one moment in my did, childhood. Did you start drinking early? No, I did not. Just checking. <laughs> um, there's. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> there's actually one moment that I recall that was definitely not my best accomplishment. Well, let's hear that. <laughs> um, <clears throat> when, so we were out at recess. It was somewhere between fourth or fifth grade, and I wanted people to. 
think I knew exactly what I was talking about, obviously. Right? Well, don't you? <laughs> no. Or well, didn't you? <laughs> I didn't. So there had been a um, snowstorm and then, like, ice had formed on top of the snow. So it was like you were basically walking on top of it and you couldn't crunch down unless yeah. you jumped. Yeah, the crust layer. Right. Yes. And And then on top of that was almost like granulars of some kind of like spinning haley type of snow and i told my two friends that were with me that that is salt and that's where it comes from you were wrong i was totally <laughs> wrong um in that same school i don't know why i kept trying to like make people think that i knew stuff i didn't know they would aerate their field and so they would take like this tractor of some sort and it would pop out all of these little yeah, the plugs. Cir- yeah, yeah the they plugs. do that at golf courses too on the greens yeah yep. so they would do that makes it really hard to putt by the way <laughs> just please saying. stop doing that yes, don't aerate your greens anymore <laughs> and so i told them that obviously something had come through there and they weren't supposed to happen and we went through and we put them all back in so yeah those are not two of my <laughs> best accomplishments it's all right. Yeah. No big deal. No. I won't judge you. <laughs> you should because that was horrible. <laughs> like, that uh, is probably... You want me to judge you? No, I don't. Okay, but... I won't then. Okay. Because <laughs> okay. that, was, that was really bad thinking. Like, yeah. There was no science behind that at all. How old were you again? I was like fourth or fifth grade. I don't yeah. Know. You, get yeah. A, you get a pass. Okay. You're fine. All right. All right. So this one I think is probably a pretty, pretty easy guess. Okay. What yeah. is your favorite season and why? Oh, uh, okay. So I love summer. It's not where I started. thought it was going to go. No. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> I love summer because I, I like the warmth. I think summer is ultimately my favorite because I can play hockey through the summer also, but we can't have our rink in our front yard in the summer. So That's this time of year true. right now, I love, I could do without as much snow. I'd love to have it. So we, it, we had this deep freeze and no snow. So we could just go end oh, to end so on like lakes. last year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, no. Two years ago, we had this deep freeze, and we got to skate and and like Sabbath Day Lake. It was wow. like glass, and we tore the whole lake apart on skates. We were firing pucks. My son and I were firing pucks as far as we could go and just chasing them down. It was amazing. Wow. Um, and I remember doing that when I was younger, and I hadn't been able to do that for years. So that was pretty cool. Um, no, so this time of year is great. I could do without as much snow, but I guess I would say. Both summer and winter are perfectly fine. That's good. <laughs> yeah. I, I would have thought it would have been winter all the way. I hate fall because you got to clean the leaves up, and it's like the mix between Dang hot and cold. Leaves. And spring sucks because there's mud everywhere. There, that's true. Here in Maine, folks, we actually don't have anything called spring. It's called mud season. Yeah, mud season. That's all there is. Yeah. Everywhere. Mud. You can't get away from it. Your cars always look like S. <laughs> S. I see. I did it. You did a good job. Yeah, thank you. Wonderful. Well... That's a, that was a shock to me. I, uh, I'm actually, for me, if, if I could make winter be the exact thing I wanted it to be, it would snow nonstop for like, I don't know, two or three days and then be like 40 or 50 degrees until it all melted. Put a little rain in there, it'll melt quicker. I don't want the rain. I don't mind the rain. I, I, see, if I, if I, wanna, I want a crap ton of snow so I can go out and play in it and it can be beautiful and then just let it all melt away i can still go skiing and snowboarding see that i guess that's part of the su- surprise maybe for you with that answer because i used to snowboard i haven't touched my board in nine years and i don't even know if my knee could handle it anymore so i'm i want to get out and try it again i'm hoping to do it this year because all of uh all of my nephews are back in maine now and um they all they live in Auburn, so they have a season's pass to Lost Valley, which is a hill. But anyway, it's fine. <laughs> True. It's a great place. They have a good snowboard park. Yeah. Right. So that's a plus. I, I guess I never was one of the tricksters. Me neither. Me neither. I mean, I like getting some air once in a while, or I used to like that. But I don't think a landing would be a good thing anymore. No, you're talking about a bad knee. I didn't not, think that. Not that... getting any younger no. at all. No, it's painful a lot. Yeah. But whatever. I used to hey. like the little goat paths on the side. Oh yeah. When yeah, I had skis yeah. on. Yeah, absolutely. When I had Those snowboards on, it freaked me out. But the skis, 
I love the little tiny paths on the side where you could do like little jumps. They were never anything huge. The, the jumps that people just randomly go yeah. down the trails would make off yeah. the side. I yeah. love those. Yeah, me too. I love those. Except for the ones that had the little kicker right on the end that would send you for a loop. Yeah, and you weren't ready for no, it? No, you'd yard sale. Oh, Big yeah. Time. yeah. Big time. Goggles over there, gloves over there. What yeah. a mess. Yes. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, thank you. No, thank you. This cheers. has been a lot of fun. Yeah, cheers, cheers to you. Thank you very yeah, much. And absolutely. I look forward to... We're going with Coastal Haze. We're going Final Coastal answer. Haze. Final answer. Coastal Haze. All right. Yeah, the label's been made. I just haven't seen it. They just, they're like, don't show that guy. Yeah, don't show him. <laughs> don't show him. Don't do it. He wants another name, but it's not going to happen, and that's yeah. okay. <laughs> because as long as people like it, as they say, it's what's inside that counts. Correct. Right? It has nothing to do with the can. It's all about the beer inside. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you so much to Ryan for grabbing beers and chatting with me. And a huge thank you to you. If you have been loving what we do here, please share us with a friend. That would be the sweetest, kindest thing ever. For links and an amazing take on today's episode, head over to greatbeeradventure.com slash podcast. You'll find links to all of our show notes right there. Until next time, get out there and try something new. Chat soon, friends. If you want to see even more from our adventures, follow us on Instagram at Great Beer Adventure and be sure to subscribe to the show. That way you won't miss a thing. Great Beer Adventure is part of the Great Pint Society. Cheers.